Swinburne University of Technology. Hi, welcome to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Jake. And in this video, we'll be looking at variables. So far, our programs have been a list of instructions inside which the data has always been fixed. So we've actually typed all of our data into the program itself. And that sounds really limiting. So wouldn't it be great if there was somewhere where we could store our data in our program so that we could maybe change it later? Well, the great thing is we can use variables. Variables allow us to store data inside our programs. We can then read that data back and change the values inside the variables as well. Great, so I've actually been writing this program or I tried to write this program, but when I wanted to get the user's name, I just didn't know how to go about it. So is this a case where we could use variables? Yes, so we could use a variable here to store the user's name inside the program and then you can use it later on. And so here we've declared the variable. When we declare a variable, we actually allocate space. We ask the computer to allocate a space to store some data. And so here we give the name to the variable. So this is the username variable. <clears throat> and it's going to store a string, so a piece of data. And I can name it whatever I like? That's correct. There are some rules. Uh, basically, if you stick to starting with an alpha character uh, and not having any spaces, you should pretty much be right. OK. And what's with the string? So the string says what kind of data we're going to be storing inside the variable. So a string in this case is textual data. So the name might be Fred or something like that. That's text. We store that inside that. We can store that inside the variable. Uh, other uh, types of things like integers for whole numbers, and you got other types like double, for example, for for real numbers. Okay, cool. So now that I have this space for my name, how do I put my name into it? For that, we can use an assignment statement. So anytime you want to change the value of a variable, the only way of doing that is through an assignment statement. Somewhere there has to be a an instruction to say put a value into this variable and that's what the assignment statement does it says the value on the right hand side store that into the variable on the left hand side so in this case we're going to <coughs> call this read string function here and it's going to return us back whatever the user typed at the terminal uh, and we can take that and store it into the username variable cool so that's exactly what i was looking for so now i have the person's name inside my variable Yes. So now that I have the name, how can I use it? So I want to tell the person that I actually know their name. How do I do that? Well, the way we can do that is just by using the variable's name inside an expression where we want that value. And what will actually happen is, so in this case, we're writing out that the user's name is an awesome name. Uh, that won't print out the text username. It will print out whatever is stored inside that variable. So here we're saying read the value from that variable and use it at this point in the program. Cool, so that's exactly what I wanted. That's great. So I've also written this program uh, for my little cousin who's learning at six times tables, but it's a bit limited at the moment. I can change it using variables so that I could use any times table. That's correct, yeah. So rather than having six hard-coded in this program and the, the answers hard-coded, we could actually calculate the answer and use a variable to determine which times table you would want to use. Okay. So we should use an integer variable? Yeah, so in this case we can have the times table is a whole number. So uh, the number that we use will be a whole number, so it can be an integer. We can declare a number variable and we could store... We start off with six, so we can yeah. store six in that variable. Because I want to make sure it works. Yeah, yeah. And then rather than printing out uh, the hard-coded answers here, we can calculate the answer. So the first one would be one times the number. And then the second one we can use two times the number. Etc. Cool. So what if I want my little cousin to change the number whenever she runs a program? All right. Well, rather than up here where we've got our assignment statement, which is storing the value 6 into number, we could change that to use read integer. Uh, so read integer is just like read string. It's a, a function that we are providing in this case. And it will read in a number that the user types in and return that number to us. And we can store that number into that variable. So when the program runs, the user can put in the number. Yes. But this isn't right because it's saying one times six still. Ah, yes. So what we can do here, rather than printing out six, because now that we're actually using a number that's going to change as yeah. the program goes, we can, in that place, put the value of the number variable. Right. So we're going to print out one times the value of whatever is in the number variable equals one times that value. 
and then two times etc for the other ones cool perfect so now that she's getting a bit better at her time tables, is there a way that I could let her start at any number, not just one every time? Well, yes. So what we could do is use another variable. So in this case, we've got our number variable, which is storing our integer. But we could also create a second variable. Uh, maybe we'll call that the, the multiplier. Uh, and that gives us two separate variables. So each variable stores its own value, like two placeholders. Cool. Uh, we could then read in another integer. So your uh, cousin or whoever it was, <laughs> sorry I've forgotten, uh, can, can enter in whatever they want as the starting value. We can store that using the assignment statement, store that in the multiplier, uh, and then we can use that multiplier uh, in our calculations. Now one thing we will have to, be, to do there is increment the multiplier between each one of the values that we're printing out. Uh, and so we can, we can actually do this. Multiplier is assigned multiplier plus one. And that might seem a little strange uh, if you think about it from a mathematical point of view. But uh, what this is doing, you've got to remember, is the assignment statement. So it's right. first executing the right-hand side, which is multiplier plus one, and then storing the value in the left-hand side. So if I started at 20, it would now go to 21. Yeah, and then it would go to, when we run it again, it would go to 22. 22. Yeah. Cool. So Jake, did you want to talk through how this works? Yeah, sure. So when we start the program, we jump straight to the main. Yep. And in our when we declare our variables, we declare we're declaring a number variable and a multiplier variable. Yeah, so it's going to allocate space for two integer variables. Now the type here determines how big that space would be. So these are two variables big enough to store one integer in each variable. Cool. So then when we run to the next instruction, we are assigning an integer to our number variable. Yeah, so the, the result of calling this read integer function, so whatever the user types in, whatever number they type in at the keyboard, will come back and that number will be stored into the number variable. So what number do we want to... So let's say we store 53. Yep, so 53 would then be assigned to the number variable. And then we go to the next instruction. So it's going to execute read integer again. Ask the user what number do we want to start at. So my cousin's like really good. So I want to do 27. Okay, cool. So 27 will then be assigned to the multiplier. So that value is put. The way you can think about it is like the variable is sort of like a box. And this is putting the value into that box. Cool. Yeah, so put the value 27 into the multiplier box. So this line prints out the equation. Yeah, that's right. So what it does is... When it prints it out, it's going to print out, so we've got multiplier first, so it reads the value of the multiplier variable there. So that's going to be 27. Then it prints out the x. We then read the value of the number variable. So that's 53, 53. yep. Equals, and then it's going to print out the result of the this, equa this expression. So multiplier times number, it has to be calculated before it prints it out. Right. So it's what is the value of multiplier? 27. Uh, times, what's the value of number? 53. So that is... 1431. Cool. So it's going to print out 1431. Cool. Now on the next line, we then need to increment the multiplier because we've already done 27 times 53. We now want to do... 28 times 53. Yeah, that's right. right. So we add 1 to the multiplier. Yeah, so this adds 1 to the multiplier. So multiplier is currently... 27. Plus 1 is... 28. Store 28 in, in the multiplier. Right, cool. So now the multiplier is 28. When we do the equation again... We print out the multiplier, which is now... 28. Yep. Times 53. Times the number, which is 53. 53. Yep. Equals multiplier times number. So multiplier is... 28. Times 53 is... 1484. 1484. Excellent. You seem very good at this, Jake. Well. <laughs> All right. So on the next slide now, uh, we now need to go to the next multiplier. Right. Yeah. So we do the same thing again. Yeah. So this time reads the value of the multiplier, which is... eight. Yep, add 1. 29. Yep, store that in the multiplier. So now the value of the multiplier variable is 29. Times the and number. We, we repeat that, so the, the yeah. output outputs, I think you get the idea now. Yeah. The output outputs the value from the multiplier variable, 29, times the number, which is 53, which is... Something like 1537. Yeah, what about 32 times 53? <laughs> we we <laughs> can calculate that spot. one later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Uh, this would then continue on until it gets to the end of the instructions. Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah. Now, there is actually a way we could improve this code uh, using a loop, but we can have a look at that, at that later. Cool. 
Okay, here's some additional examples where we declare different variables. So here we have a, a user age variable, which stores an integer. And we have a user height variable, which stores a double. So a double is a, a real number. So like 0.5 or 10.3 cool. yep. or 1.0. Right. Yeah, anything, if you want a decimal part to it then, yeah. And user student, which is Boolean. What's a Boolean? So Boolean uh, is a type that allows us to store one of two values, either a true or false value. So you could think right. of it as, as true, false, or yes, no, uh, those sort of things. So here we've case, is the user a student? So the answer is yes. true or false, or the or answer no. is you can think about yes or no, is another way to think about it. Cool. Okay. An another example is the smiley face program. Yeah, so this one calculates the positions of circles. Uh, and so we can use some variables and we can calculate whereabouts the circles should be positioned on the screen. Cool. Okay, that's it for variables. Uh, variables allow us to store data in our program. Whenever we declare a variable, we are allocating space, so we're creating the variable, we're asking for space. Uh, we use the name to refer to that variable. You can put values into the variable using an assignment statement. Uh, and you can read the value out of the variable by just using the variable's name in an expression. So next, why don't you guys have a look at our functions and procedures video or our parameters video. Uh, there's also the looping video uh, after you've watched those to have a look at another way of doing that, that time table thing a bit more easily. Cool. So it could potentially loop forever. Great. All right, I hope you enjoy those and we look forward to seeing this you again soon. This has been a Spindle introduction.